Hello developers. Have you ever imagined a website layout where the left and right panels scroll in opposite directions, each revealing animated content, and when you hover, the product flips with motion? In this video, I've recreated that effect. A scroll-powered dual-column animation using HTML, CSS, and GSAP. You'll learn how to build a split-screen sticky layout, control reverse scroll animations, Animate product transitions with mouse hover using timeline logic. It's smooth, it's responsive, and it looks amazing. And yes, you can switch subtitles in your own language from YouTube settings. If you're enjoying the content, like this video, subscribe to the channel, and now let's move to the HTML structure and break it all down. Let's start from the top. Inside the body tag, everything is wrapped in a main container called scroll container. This gives us full control over how the vertical scroll behaves. We've set its height to 300% of the viewport, so the entire scroll experience spans across three full screens. Now inside this, we have a sticky container. This is where the magic begins. We pin this container to the top using CSS Sticky, so that while the user scrolls, this layout stays fixed, and only the content inside it animates. This sticky container has two main columns, left side column and right side column. Each one will scroll in a different direction, creating that half and half effect. Let's look at the left side column first. It has three sections, section one left, section two left, and section three left. In section one left, we display a full background image using a div named background image one. This sets the scene for the first slide. Then, inside the same section, we place a block called Content Parent. This holds the actual content like headings and links. We start with a subtitle, then a clickable link block, which contains a main heading and a right arrow icon using bootstrap icons. Now moving to section two left, this is where we introduce our product bottle. We use two images here, the front bottle and the back bottle, each given specific classes so we can animate them separately later with GSAP. Also, we place a large background text behind the bottle to show the product number. It says number two. Then we repeat a similar structure for section three left, this time using a different background image and new content for another product, lemon number two. Now switching to the right side column, the structure is mirrored but in reverse. We begin with section three right. This also contains a front and back bottle plus background text. Then in section two right, we show another image background with content related to line number two. And finally, in section one right, we flip the structure again, placing background text and the bottle images for orange. This left and right zigzag layout creates a visually rich story flow and gives us the foundation to animate scroll directions separately. At the bottom of the body, we've added external style sheets and JavaScript files. We load bootstrap icons, our own style file, the GSAP core library, scroll trigger plugin, and our custom animation script. All of this gives us structure, but nothing moves yet. That's what we'll handle with CSS and JavaScript next. Let's move to the CSS breakdown. Let's begin from the top of the CSS. First, we import two fonts from Google Fonts, Aramo and Sail. Sail gives our headings a decorative serif look while Aramo is clean and modern for body content and links. Then we reset the defaults using universal selector to remove margin and padding and apply border box sizing to all elements. Inside the body tag, we set a black background color and use Arial as the base font with smooth line height. This gives a clean canvas for everything to sit on top. Now we style all the headings. Both level one and level two headings use the sail font white color, and margin spacing to create breathing room. We give heading one a bold, large size, and heading two a medium, flowing size. Anchor tags, the clickable links, use Aramo font, light gray color, and a large readable size for desktop. Now the core layout begins with the scroll container. We give it a relative position and set the height to 300 viewport heights. This means the user can scroll through three full screens vertically, Next comes the sticky container. This one is pinned at the top with CSS sticky. It takes full width and height of the screen and uses flex layout to place left and right columns side by side. Inside that, the left side column and right side column both get a height of 100% and flex set to one, so they take equal space on screen. 
Now we define each of the six major sections, three on the left and three on the right. For every section, we make sure the width is 100%, the height is 100% viewport height, and overflow is hidden. This ensures that every section becomes a full screen panel. Some sections, like the bottle sections, also use flex layout to center the product vertically and horizontally. We add a background color to each section to match the product flavor. For example, orange, lime green, and deep blue. Now we define the background text using position absolute and a very large font size, 18 times the viewport width. We reduce its opacity using a light white color with transparency and place it behind all elements using a negative Z index. Then we style the product bottles. The front bottle is kept above using Z index 2, while the back bottle sits behind with Z index 1 and absolute positioning. Now we come to the content block, which is absolute positioned at the bottom left. We give it padding from the bottom and left to space it out properly. The animated text heading inside the content parent is styled with Arimo font, white color, and a large responsive font size. This makes the scroll reveal animation stand out clearly. For the background image divs like background image one, two, and three, we apply full width and height, use a centered background image, set it to cover and prevent it from repeating. This creates the rich visual storytelling experience. The subtitle heading and arrow icon are styled simply. We set a large font size for the subtitle and apply a top margin for the arrow to push it downward visually. At this point, our layout is fully prepared visually Every section is fixed in size and position, and all visual elements, text, images, and background layers are ready to be animated with GSAP. Let's move to the JavaScript logic and see how we animate the scroll and hover transitions. All right, developers, let's decode the JavaScript. At the top, we register the GSAP plugin scroll trigger using gsap.register plugin. This lets us use advanced scroll animations. Next, we store all the left side sections into an array using GSAP's utility method Torre. It grabs all child divs inside the class left side kernel. We do the same for the right side. Then we grab the right container using document.querySelector to target the right side column directly. After that, we calculate how many sections we have by checking the length of the left side sections array. Now comes the most important part, a reusable function called setup scroll animations. Inside this function, we first get the height of the viewport using height. This height will be used to control scroll-based distances. Then we calculate the full scroll distance, multiply viewport height by number of sections. Before creating any animations, we remove any existing scroll triggers by calling scrolltrigger.getall.forage.kill. We also kill any ongoing gsap tweens using gsap.killtweensoff for both left sections and right container. This is important when the page is resized or reset. Next, we set the initial position of the right side column using gsap.set. We push it upward by multiplying the section height by total section count minus one. This makes the right content appear in reverse scroll order. Now we animate the left side content. We apply a gsap dot to animation to shift the Y% percent upward for the left sections based on how many sections we have. The ease is set to none, which means the scroll speed is uniform no easing curve. Then we add a scroll trigger to control the scroll movement. It pins the sticky container, starts from top of the scroll container, and scrolls for the total calculated scroll length. The scrub option is set to true, which means scroll and animation are fully synced in real time. After that, we animate the right container in the opposite direction. We again use a GSAP animation on the y-axis, but this time we move it to zero, because we had set it up earlier with a negative offset. The scroll trigger is set in the same way. From top to bottom of scroll container with scrub enabled for smooth syncing. Finally, we call setup scroll animations once to initialize everything on page load. But we also need to handle screen resizing. So we add an event listener to the Windows resize event. Every time the screen resizes, we recalculate scroll height and reinitialize the triggers. Now comes the hover logic, where GSAP makes everything dynamic. We select all sections from left and right using a long selector with multiple class names. For each section, we grab the bottle and bottle back images using query selector. If both are found, we first set their default position using gsap.set. 
Front bottle starts slightly to the right and is hidden. Back bottle is also set to right and invisible. Then we create two GSAP animations to bring them into view. Bottle fades in from the right, and bottle back shifts slightly downward. Now we add two hover event listeners, mouse enter and mouse sleeve. On mouse enter, we stop any current animation using gsap.killtweensoft. We create a new gsap timeline. In this timeline, the front bottle moves down, shifts slightly right, rotates a bit, and fades out. Then right after, the back bottle animates in from the bottom, scales up, rotates into position, and fades in using elastic easing for that springy effect. On mouse sleeve, we again stop any current tweens. Then we create another timeline. This time, the back bottle fades out with a slight shrink and rotation. Then the front bottle comes back in, resetting its original position, fully visible and centered. This gives us a beautiful cinematic effect, where the bottle swaps to the back view on hover and reverts when the user moves away. And that's how we create a fully interactive, scroll-reactive product showcase using GSAP timelines, scroll triggers, and a clever combination of mouse events and transitions. And that wraps up our animated showcase. In this project, we explored how to connect scroll position, GSAP timelines, and hover events to build a modern split-screen experience. From layout structure to animation triggers, every part was synced for fluid interaction. If you enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe for more deep dive UI tutorials. See you in the next video.